Now the final condition we want to cover is tibial stress fracture um, or indeed fibular stress fracture is, is less common but for a tibial stress fracture, a tibial stress fracture as I've already said, we're dealing with a focus of pain. The athlete can identify it, I can identify it. Um, the onset will be gradual, but one of the key issues with, with uh, a tibial stress fracture is that unlike shin splints, the pain tends to linger at rest, okay? And it can especially be a problem at night time. So you can, it can wake you up at night time. So that's one little clue that if you're getting, uh, getting pain at rest or, or pain during the night, uh, that's one thing that, that you would potentially be thinking about. Once we've clinically examined this and we think that that's a possibility, investigation is incredibly important. Um, historically, uh, uh, plain x-rays have been taken. Isotopic bone scan is also routinely used. Um, IBS is a three-phase process. Uh, a process, it's a three-phase process where you, uh, you basically have to spend several hours in an outpatient's uh, area. You have to have an injection of a radioactive compound which is taken up by um, a metabolically active bone um, and you then look at uh, three phases uh, of that uptake over a period of time. What it will show on the x-ray is a, a black hot spot on a white x-ray. Now the current thought on IBS is that it's, it's, it's relatively high, high radiation. It involves a fair bit of messing around. You've got to be in, uh, in a hospital for three to four hours. Um, and it's probably basically telling us what we already know from our clini clinical investigation. So a lot of radiologists are actually questioning the value of this right now. There are some new techniques that are quite good. Um, um, diagnostic ultrasound is actually a new technique for looking at uh, tibial stress fractures. It shows us periosteal reaction quite well, shows us any periosteal lifting quite well and um, if you've got a good sonographer who's used to looking at this, I think they can image a, a stress fracture very accurately. Non-invasive, very inexpensive, very quick, why wouldn't you think about that? Um, MRI is the ultimate imaging as it is with pretty much everything. An MRI will image um, a tibial stress fracture beautifully with great specificity um, so we know exactly what we're dealing with but it is expensive and it may well be a little bit of overkill. What do you do with a tibial stress fracture? Well for an athlete like Rosie she's going to hear the dreaded words that no athlete wants to hear and that is Rosie you're going to have to stop running. Um, that's the only way you can treat a tibial stress fracture. We're talking between four and six weeks for any fracture this is a major weight-bearing bone, so it's going to be, it's going to be at the, the longer end of that time period, so I think six weeks. We're going to be titrating the progress of this fracture very carefully over that period of time to see, uh, see how she's progressing um, over that period of time. Does that mean that Rosie should be doing, doing no activity at all? Absolutely not. Uh, she should absolutely be doing other things because movement is very important in terms of healing. So the old days where you had an Achilles tendon problem, you rested it for six weeks, have completely gone out the window. We understand the very positive role of progressive loading as a part of the healing progress. So for Rosie, I'd be getting her to do things like perhaps running in the deep end of a pool. I'd be getting her to do other uh, non-weight bearing training. So being on a bike, doing anything she can to maintain some sort of aerobic capacity. Um, once we'd settled the pain down somewhat, if I had access to it, I'd be looking at putting her on something like an Alter G, which is a special treadmill that allows us to unweight the athlete between 100% of their body weight and 20% of their body weight. Fantastic new rehab tool, um, allows, uh, allows the athlete to still keep running but they're not stressing the bone outside that optimal level that's likely to cause an injury. Uh, in all of these things, again, biomechanics are pretty important, so we would be considering the role of, of an orthotic device, either again a prefab um, like bioorthotic or some sort of custom built orthotic device. Uh, we'd be looking at, at the strength, uh, flexibility, um, mobility issues. We'd be trying to figure out whether there was any restriction in any of the structures and mobilising those structures if we found those restrictions. So that's quite long-winded, but it's only a small snapshot of what can go on in the shin. Um, it is a very, very common problem in athletes. Um, it's a very common uh, sequelae of training error. So it's all about trying to understand how the problem occurred and then putting the protocols in place to try and sort it out.